Are you a master student, a PhD student or a postdoc? And have you ever received emails like this where they ask you to be the editor of a journal or to submit manuscripts in that particular journal? Do you know what this green icon is next to the author names in a paper and how you as a first author or a co-author can link this researcher ID to your name in the paper? Hello everyone. I am Gabanjana, I'm a researcher and a PhD graduate from TIFR Mumbai. In today's episode, you will learn about predatory journals, ORCID, and DOI. Predatory journals are exactly as the name suggests in that they feed off of the prey, the authors. Predatory journals are known by various nicknames like fake journals, questionable journals, deceptive journals, illegitimate journals, or journals operating in bad faith. By definition, predatory publishers or journals are those journals which charge authors a fee for publication with no intent of providing editorial or peer review in return. What's alarming is that there are greater than 15,000 predatory journals that are lying in wait for you to submit your manuscript. The benefits of predatory journals are that there may be rapid publication time, high acceptance rates, and minimum peer review with almost immediate acceptance. Wow! However, there are various downsides to predatory journals, including minimum peer review, because there is no chance to improve your article through the revisions of the reviewers. Additionally, predatory journals may ask to pay fees before your manuscript is accepted, that is, at the submission stage of your manuscript. They may ask to submit your manuscripts over email. There would be no mention of copyright or copyright transfer to the authors. Additionally, there would be no retraction policy after publication and the journal would not respond to emails from the authors. As a result, this affects your reputation because the experts in the field recognize which are the predatory journals and they would not look upon your work being credible if you publish in a predatory journal. Now let me list a few characteristics of predatory journals which you can also find at thinkcheck-submit.org whose link I have provided in the description. These types of journals have a wide scope or publish out of scope articles. They display unofficial impact factors. They may either have no editorial board or the editorial board can comprise editors who are not actually part of the journal. They would have vague policies like peer review licensing and copyright policies. These kind of journals usually spam researchers with emails inviting submissions for manuscripts. And often these emails may have topics which are unrelated to the author. These kind of journals advertise very fast times from submission to publication. They would publish nonsense articles and some of these journals might even have legitimate looking sites. There may also be journals that have spelling mistakes or incorrect grammar in the website of the journal. So now that I've scared you enough not to publish in a predatory journal, let's look at how you can identify such journals and avoid them. First of all, you should check whether the journal you want to submit your manuscript in is listed on websites like Scopus, the Web of Science Clarivate and the Directory of Open Access Journals. You should never pay at the initial submission process when your manuscript has not yet been peer-reviewed. You should never email your manuscript to the journal and submit only via websites like Scholar One, Manuscript Central, etc. You should check the journal website carefully for any inconsistencies, spelling mistake, grammar errors, and check whether the journal is well known in the field. In the journal website, you should also check whether any author fees are given for publishing the article. You should also check the editor and the editorial board to see if they are well-recognized experts in the field. If there are any doubts, you should email the editor. If you liked the video till now, like and subscribe for more content. Next, we come to ORCID. ORCID, which is short for Open Researcher and Contributor ID, is a persistent digital identifier that you can control and it distinguishes you from other researchers. With the help of ORCID, you can connect your ORCID ID with your professional information like your affiliations, grants, publications, peer review, and more. This is an example of an ORCID ID and the URL which leads to the ORCID ID. 
if your orchid ID is linked to your article, then this green orchid logo would show up next to your name in the authors list as you can see in this example or even in this example. In some cases, the orchid logo would not be present on the top of the paper, but if you scroll down to the author section, you would find that your orchid would be linked as you can see here. Now, how do you link your orchid ID to the article? So, suppose I want to submit my article in the inorganic chemistry journal of the ACS publications. So, what I do is I go to the journal website. As you can see, I have come to inorganic chemistry website and you go to this uh, submit manuscript over here. So in every journal, you would find a place where you have the submit manuscript option. So you would click on the submit manuscript and this would redirect you to the scholar one website or the manuscript central website. In the case of ACS, it would go to ACS Paragon. So here, if you don't already have an account, you have to make an account with the journal. And here you can see that this is the home page. In the home page, you can find that there is some place where you can input your email and name. So you go here and after it loads, you would see that there is this region of ORCID. So if you have not already linked your ORCID, this region would be empty. Now, if you have your ORCID ID and you have made an ORCID account, you can put that ORCID number in this region so that you can link your ORCID with the journal that you want to submit. So every time you submit to a new journal, this has to be redone and then you would be linking your ORCID ID with the different journals. So if I scroll down over here, you can see that I have given my name at email address. So the email address that you give here should preferably be your institute email address so that it is easier to link and you can alternately also give your secondary email address which may be your Gmail or any other email address. In the last part of the video, we will discuss DOI. DOI is the digital object identifier, a string of numbers, letters and symbols that are used to uniquely identify an article and it additionally can also redirect to the article with the help of a URL. These are some examples of DOIs for few articles. The DOI of an article can be found on the article website like in this example or even this example. If you open the PDF of the article, here also you can find the DOI as you can see in this journal and in some journals it can be found at a different position in the article like in this case. If I want to send an article to a colleague, I would usually send the PDF of the article or the DOI number of the article to show why this helps. I have put here the name of a paper and you can see uh, when I put the name of the paper that there is this article which shows up. Along with that, there is this preprint. There might also be conference proceedings which have the similar name as that of the article that we want to search. For that reason, it is better to give the DOI of the article that you are considering. So in the search bar, let me input the DOI of the article. You can see that the web page is redirected to the article that we want. Thank you for watching till the end. In the next episode, you'll learn how to write the best titles, keywords, and abstract for your paper.